we're going to talk about how this wheel works. Everyone should have one of these that came with your book. In the center here, there is this rotating white wheel. Also, there's several markings, and we will talk all about what those markings mean and how they can help you pull together color combinations. We're going to talk about families or groups of color and how they work together. It's important to know how color families work together. Just like when you have relatives that you may not think you get along with, if you know how to collaborate together, you can come up with something really spectacular. The terrific thing about knowing how a color wheel works and how these color groups come together, you can really begin to understand the relationships between colors, how they create contrast and dynamics within something as flat as a quilt. Everywhere on this wheel, there's seven different slots of color. There's also a hole in the center so you can hold it up to any fabric to color match. The symbols in the center of the wheel are stacked. Separate, they look like this. Each symbol will point to different color groups on the wheel. We will talk more about this in a few minutes. Each segment on the color wheel, the one with the rotating disc sent to you with the class, also has a corresponding number, one being the lightest and seven being the darkest. These also match up with each of your color card sets, one through seven. Notice that the number one shade on the wheel, if it's orange, is also gonna coordinate with the number one shade of a different color. For example, each of these cards are the number one, the lightest shade of every single color in your color card deck. Lay out one shade of color from darkest to lightest. The shade on the far left is going to be number eight, which is your hue color. The same thing applies when you go to the paint store. The colors are valued from darkest to lightest in a fan deck. They're also grouped by types of color with neutrals, and brights. The same thing works in your color wheel. You'll have darkest to lightest shades by value. Value is how light or dark a color is. Analogous colors are neighbors on the wheel. As neighbors, they share similar color bases, like red, yellow, or blue. Analogous colors will be next to each other. There is no symbol that coordinates with analogous colors. They are one of the simplest groups. Any color and the two colors next to it are considered analogous. Pause here and take a minute to evaluate which analogous tones you like the best. Complementary colors live across the street from each other. There is high contrast between these two colors. The symbols for complementary colors look like this. You can find them in the center of the wheel opposite each other. Because of their strong contrast, they are often used in sports teams, logos, and brand recognition. Pause here to try this exercise on your own. In this Jack's Quilt pattern design by Rebecca Bryan of Bryan House Quilts, you can see the strong opposition of this complementary color palette. Primary colors were a trio shown on the color wheel with this red triangle. Can be red, yellow, or blue. It can also be any combination of three colors that happen to be at an equilateral angle on the wheel. It can be purple, orange, and green. There are lots of varieties and options with this combination. As you can see in this Land That I Love quilt designed by Amy Smart, she has used primary colors. She's reverted back to the classics we all love, red, yellow, and blue, but she's used them here in a patriotic style. Pause here to try this exercise on your own. Split complementary colors will be across the wheel from each other, but instead of directly, it'll be one primary color. Primary in this case, meaning a focus color, not necessarily red, yellow, or blue. With two colors adjacent. It also has a distinctive Y shape. Split complementary is going to be shown with the small orange arrows. Begin with the star and find the two colors opposite. The secondary colors will be the other two small orange points. Those will be your complements. Try making split complementary groups using your color cards and coordinate with the wheel. In the Pink's Moxie Quilt, she has used a split complementary color scheme. There is more cool tones than there are warm tones in this plan. Pause here to try this exercise on your own. Rectangular Tetratic has two sets of complementary colors together, giving four colors and pairing them in a rectangle shape. 
A rectangular triad is defined by the four green rectangles you see along these edges. Again, begin with the star and work your way around to create a four color group. In your own rectangular tetradic combination with your color card. We're gonna look at two very different quilts. The first by Cory Yoder called Dream On uses a simple green, pink, yellow, and blue color scheme. Here, Angela Pingel has done the same thing, same four colors, but in different tones than seen in the previous quilt. The use of color across various parts of the quilt also adds to the composition. Two very different styles and color palettes, but they've used the same color family groups. Last but not least, you can make a square tetrad using the same concept, following the four small purple squares on the color wheel. Remember to start with your primary color with the star and add the other colors to match. Again, try this with your color cards. Practicing with the color cards as well as the color wheel, you're training your eye as you go. Here's a simple example in Angela Pingel's cast offs. See how each circle carries four major quadrants, also one with each color. This is a very simple and straightforward example of using the four color group. Last but not least is multicolor or rainbow. You can use all the colors in the color wheel with this one. Any excuse for quilters to use a full rainbow is a good one. It's a great way to use up scraps. Layla Gardunia makes these cute paper pieced mountain ranges out of scraps. I also like this quilt by Jody Godfrey and how it uses scraps in all the centers of the stars, but it surrounds them with a more solid, controlled color palette. Vanessa Christensen of V & Co. continues to be a industry leader in her use of color. She loves the tone on tones and the overall rainbow effect that you can find in all of her fabric collections. Put your color cards into groups like you learned today. Make note of the ones you love the best. Next up, tone, value, and shade. 